I'm going to demonstrate building a simulation model of a reservoir and I'll do that using GoldSim version 12.1. To do that, I need to first start up GoldSim. When GoldSim starts up, you'll see this little window here that allows you to either open a new model or open an existing model or one that has been recently opened before. I'm going to start by opening a new model. When you see Goldsim start up for the first time, you'll see that there are two blank windows. On the left is the browser window, and on the right is the graphics pane. The graphics pane is where you can add Goldsim elements. I'm going to start by adding what's called a pool element, and this is a good element to uh, easily represent a pool of water in which we have inflows and multiple outflows coming out of the reservoir. So I'm going up here to our element categories. One of those is the store category. Within this category, we have the pool element. I'll click on the pool, and then in the graphics pane, I'll just click in here to add the element. What happens is the properties dialog for that element immediately opens. And this allows us to define our reservoir so I'm just going to call this reservoir by editing the element ID. The next thing I want to do is edit the description so that later on I know what this is and I remember and I should always do this for all the elements I'm adding to the model. The next thing I want to do is define the units. In this case I have quantity units and flow units. And this is because this, this element is tracking its current quantity, in our, in our case, the volume of water over time. And then it also tracks inflows and outflows. And those need to be re represented in a flow unit. So the first thing I want to do is add the quantity unit, which in, in this case is going to be megaliters. The flow units I will use in this model are liters per second. It doesn't matter what type of units you use here as long as they are consistent. All right, once this is done, we can hit OK, and now that information is saved with the reservoir. The next thing I want to do is add an inflow to the reservoir using a time series. The time series is another type of element in GoldSim that is in the inputs category up here. If I click on the inputs category, you'll see there's a drop list and one of those inputs or one of the elements here is called time series. So I'll click on time series and add that. The time series element allows us to define uh, time, uh, paired time data that is defined as either a lapse time or a calendar time. And the, um, the default for this depends on the uh, simulation settings of the model, which we'll look at shortly. But for now, I'm just going to give this a name. I'll call it inflow TS for time series, and then give it a description. The units here are again liters per second. Down here in the data definition, we have a couple of options on where we want the, the, uh, the data to come from. In our case, just for simplicity, I'm going to copy and paste the data from Excel, but you could import it from Excel, for example. So I'm going to leave this as locally defined. The next one is the represents, which is instantaneous over, um, over the time step, meaning that um, the, the, the model will interpolate between time points if needed. And, that, and this is the default, so I'm just going to leave it. If I click on edit data, then we see the table of date or time information, and then the values. I don't have these. Uh, I don't have these ready yet, so I'm just going to leave that as is and click OK. Right now, what I want to do is I want to define the simulation settings for this model. If I go into Excel, where my data is, I can see here that I have some reservoir input data, starting with a time series. So my time series starts in January 1st, 2013, and it runs all the way through 
January 1st, 2014. So it's just running for one year, and you can see that there are daily time steps here. The, the actual data, the values that I want to use are in column B, the inflow, liters per second, starting here. So this is the data that I want to bring in, copy it, and paste it into, into GoldSim. But knowing that we are running a model for one year period with one day time steps gives me the information I need to set the simulations settings. So I'm going back to the model. I'm going up here to simulation settings. And then I'm going to change the time basis from elapsed time to a calendar time basis. That means that the simulation is going to run on a calendar basis. The duration is set here, but there's also a start and an end time. So I'm just going to change my start and end time to start January 1, 2013, and end January 1, 2014. The next thing down here is the basic step. We want that to be a one day time step, so I'm going to leave that as is. Alternatively, instead of typing in one day explicitly like that, I can select from this drop list on a calendar basis the days. It, it's the same thing. Note that if I wanted a one month time step, I could select calendar months and it would align perfectly with the calendar for each month. Also notice that when I changed the start and end time, Goldsim automatically filled in the duration of 365 days. And you can see down here at the bottom it says we have 366 scheduled update times for this simulation. And that's because we have one update at the very beginning, one update at the very end that adds one additional time point that it saves information in. Sometimes we see users entering um, 1231 2013 for example to simulate a single year and this is actually one day short of a year because the update occurs at midnight so to prevent us from running one day short we need to go all the way through to the beginning of the next year knowing that it's at midnight which doesn't mean it continues into that year it just ends at the very beginning of that year which is the same as the end of the previous year with our simulation settings complete, I'm going to click OK and now go into my time series and go to Edit Data so that I can paste in the values from Excel. But the other thing I need to do is change my time unit from day to calendar time so that the values that it expects to see in this first column will be date time values. So I'll go back to Excel and I'm going to copy all this data to the clipboard, come back to GoldSim, and paste. Those values are in there. Now I can click OK, and now I have the time series set up, and you can see it says number of time series records 366. If I run the model, then I can view a plot of the time series over time by right-clicking on the element and selecting Time History Result. And it shows me a plot of the data. Now what I want to do is I want to cause this inflow rate to be an inflow to this reservoir. Currently there's nothing happening to this reservoir over time. If I right click on the reservoir, select time history result, you see it just says zero. So we need the inflow to come into this reservoir. To do that I need to edit this model. Currently we are in result mode. You can see that my cursor is green. The bottom bar down here is also green, indicating that we are in result mode. So to get back out of result mode and edit this model, I need to click on edit mode. You can also hit F4. I'm just going to say OK to return to edit mode. I don't want to simulate scenarios, so I'll just click OK. Now you can see that the bar down here is blue. We are now in edit mode. Okay, the next step is to edit the reservoir to add the inflow. So now I will click on the inflows tab and select add. And now we can browse the model for whatever we want to add to this reservoir. And I'm going to click on the inflows time series. Now it's added and you can see as soon as that's done, we have an, an influence line that's drawn from the time series over to the reservoir indicating that Goldsim knows there's this link here. It's called an influence line. 
I'll click OK, and now you see, you see we have this uh, this flow going from time series to reservoir. Now if I run the model, we should be able to see the effect on the reservoir. I'll click Run, plot the reservoir, and you see this is the reservoir volume over time in megaliters. If I want to compare this plot to the inflows, then I can add another output by clicking on the Edit Properties button of the Time History. Now I click Add Result, and click on the Inflow Time Series, and click OK. Now you can see we have a Y1 axis and Y2 axis checkbox here, and that's corresponding to the primary axis of the chart, and that has units of megaliters, while the secondary axis has units of liters per second. I can also change the label of this if I wish. It's still linked to that output inflow time series, but I gave it a different name. Now I click close, and you can see that I have those two outputs on the chart. This chart is still not saved in the model. You can see there are only two elements currently in this model. So I need to make sure that I save this so that when I come back, I don't have to recreate it every time. So I go back into the Edit Properties, and I click on Create Element. Now you can see it has a name, History 1. It's also added to the model. You can see it behind there. We can I can show you later. But first, let's change the name of it to Reservoir History. Now you can see on the left axis, this is the Y1, shows volume in red. And on the Y2 axis on the right, we have inflows in green. Now when I close this, I can move the history over here. And anytime I run the model, I can always go back and view the chart. All right, so we are in result mode. I want to make more changes to this model so that we can add an outflow. To do that, I go back to edit mode. Click OK. Now we're in edit mode. And now I want to add a... Um, and a demand on this reservoir to pull water out. Let's assume that we have some irrigated area that we need to water with uh, water in this reservoir. So I need to set up um, another data point in here that's going to be called irrigation requirement. And this is going to be a constant. We're just going to assume that we need to provide 250 liters per second over a certain period of the year to provide irrigation. So I'm going to, since that's just a constant number, I'm just going to add a constant using a data element, and that's also in the inputs category of the um, um, the uh, the element input uh, control bar up here. So I click on data, and then add the data element here, and I'm going to call this irrigation requirement. This is the water required for irrigation, which is used for outflow from the reservoir. Okay, and this will also have units of liters per second. Note that we, we don't have to use the same consistent uh, or the same uh, outflow units here. I could specify it as GPM or cubic meters per week or any number of things, as long as it's consistent with a flow rate, meaning uh, volume over time. But the number that I specify in here, I've already said, is going to be 250 liters per second. Notice it, that Goldson will make the conversion for me on the fly in this tooltip. Cubic meters per week, that's the display unit. But I don't want to see it in cubic meters per week. I want to see it in liters per second. All right, so that's 250 liters per second. That's our irrigation requirement. Now, if I go back to the Excel file, you'll see here at the top, we have some operational rules here that say that, um, no, sorry, not here. Uh, up here, the irrigation demand, it says here that we have um, a demand that starts in June and goes through September, and it's 250 liters per second. The rest of the months is zero. So this is implying that on June 1, we start at 250, and on October 1, we go back to zero. What we want to do in the model is we want to set up um, 
a function that tells us when the irrigation season starts and when it ends. So in GoldSim, I'm going to do that with what's called a status element, and that's found in the events category under status. If I click on the status element, the property shows up here, and in this one I want to call it irrigation on. Irrigation on. And this will have a this uh, element outputs either true or false. It's a Boolean. So what I want to specify here in the description is I want to say when it's true, when it results in true, then true if the irrigation season is on and then false if off. Okay, so the status element requires that we trigger it to true and trigger it to false. The triggering mechanism is um, in GoldSim allows you to add one or more triggers and um, you just you add those by clicking on the trigger button here and now we can add a trigger. In our case it's just going to be based on the, the time of year. So I'm going to add here an on true event. So you click on, you can add triggers by clicking add and then you can change the type of trigger up here. So I'm going to go to this drop down and select on true. Now GoldSim keeps track of time during the simulation and while it's doing so it keeps track of many different kinds of um, uh, time variables, one of those being the month of the year. And all it does during the simulation is during it, it knows what time of the year it is, it knows the calendar, and so it can tell if it's month one or month two, where month one corresponds with January, month two corresponds with February, etc. So there's a variable in here called month, and that's M-O-N-T-H. And then what we're going to say here is if the month is greater than four, so if it's greater than April, then go ahead and set it to true. It's going to trigger as soon as we hit May 1 at midnight. That's the beginning of the irrigation season. I'm going to close this and add a false trigger. This turns off the irrigation season on true. And I'm going to say here when the month is greater than 10. So as soon as we hit, um, and I need to check to make sure this is correct in the Excel file here. As soon as we hit October 1, it turns off. So I think I wrote it a little bit wrong here. We need to say when the month is greater than or equal to 10, then we need it to turn off. So that's going to turn off exactly on October 1st at midnight. Let me close that. Now I can check this, uh, check the logic by just running the model and looking at the output of the status. So I'm going to right click on the status element and look at the time history and you can see that it turns on May 1st and it turns off September 30th, which is actually actually off on October 1st. So that appears to be working correctly. That's our irrigation season window right there. Okay, so while that is true, I want to apply this irrigation requirement. To do that, I'm going to need an if statement. And an easy way to build an if statement in GoldSim is with the selector. So that's over here in the functions category. If I click on that and then go to selector, I'm going to add the selector here. And the selector just lets me um, add any number of if statements that I wish. If, and then if else, and then finally else. In my case, I'm only going to have one if statement here, which is pretty simple. I'm going to call this irrigation demand. So this is the demand for irrigation supply um, supplied by the reservoir and it will also have flow units of liters per second and now right here is where I put in the the uh, the name of the irrigation um, uh, status element and so I'm just going to start typing it I R R and you see as soon as I as soon as I do that Goldson gives me a list of any element in the model that starts with IRR, or any output in the in the model, I should say. And it turns out that it's the first on the list, so I'll just hit the tab key, auto completes it to irrigation on. Then I come over here and I say when irrigation is on, I want it to be the irrigation requirement. So I start typing IRR again, and I can just pick on irrigation requirement, or I can hit the down arrow until it's highlighted and then hit enter. And then if the irrigation season is not on, we have a zero. 
now that that logic is built in the selector, now I can see that if I run the model, my irrigation demand is only running during the irrigation season, and it, you can see it's got a value of 250 liters per second. Now I can apply this as an outflow to my reservoir. So I'm going back to edit mode, going into my reservoir. I already have my inflow defined. Now I want to go to outflows and the outflow here is going to be called irrigation. That's just a name. I'm just giving it an arbitrary name, but um, I, was, I just want to give it a name that means something to me. Um, and then the next field here is the actual link to the irrigation demand. So I'm going to highlight that and type in irrigation demand. And now you can see there is a link from the irrigation demand to the reservoir, indicating that the reservoir is being influenced by this irrigation demand. When that's done, I can click OK. And now I should be able to run the model and see the effect of the inflow and the demand on this total volume of water. But I also want to add this irrigation demand um, as an output to this plot. But we need to be careful here because the, the demand might not be the same thing as what is actually withdrawn from the reservoir. So there are two different things here and we should, we should be clear about what they are. So I'm just going to add another expression that all it does is just reference the actual deliveries from this reservoir. So I'm going to click on this expression element here, add it here and call it irrigation delivery. And this is the actual water delivered for irrigation, which could be less than the demand. You know, if the reservoir runs out of water, of course, wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to provide it. Okay, so I go over here and I click on, um, I can just start typing reservoir, or I can right click in here and go to insert link to go find the output I want to link. And I'm just gonna browse the model now. And I did that one, let me do that one more time. I just highlighted everything in here, I can remove it. And then I right click in the equation and select insert link to browse in the model to the, to the uh, output that I want to reference. So I find it here, reservoir, expand that, and it's in the outflows. There's an outflows folder, and this is where I can have one or more outflows, and there's the irrigation um, delivery output that I have. So I click on that and select OK. You can see it says reservoir.irrigation. Another way I can do that, instead of right-clicking, I can just start typing reservoir tab to complete, hit dot to find the outputs of the reservoir, and then continue typing irrigation tab to complete and that is the reservoir irrigation output for the irrigation delivery so now i can connect that to my plot i'm going to open up the chart and add the irrigation delivery there as an output i'm going to take out that underscore click ok run the model and now look at the plot and now you can see the reservoir volume is rising during the high inflows and then we turn on our irrigation and you can see that the the rate of change starts to decrease a little bit and then the the inflows uh, become less than the outflows and the reservoir volume begins to drop and it drains down until we we hit empty and then the reservoir um, or the uh, the deliveries are then curtailed during a certain part of time when there are still demands until they are finally shut off so this seems to be making sense. And there now there's one more thing I want to add to this model, and that is the operating um, controls for the uh, for the reservoir. And those are going to be based on um, specific volumes that we're going to set um, that are shown in the Excel file. So let me go into Excel, and we'll look down here at operating rules, and we can see that we have an initial starting volume in the reservoir uh, shown here, and then we have a minimum volume that we never want to let the uh, reservoir go below here and then we have a spillway which prevents water from rising above that volume amount so we want to put all of these into our into our reservoir let's start with the initial i'm just going to copy this value to the clipboard that's a volume in megaliters and that's the starting point at the beginning of the simulation so i'm going back to GoldSim, clicking on edit mode and going into the reservoir and then going to the initial quantity and pasting that value there. 
you can see that Goldson automatically appends megaliters because it knows that our quantity units are in megaliters. Now if I run the model, we should see that it starts at that higher level. It's no longer starting at zero. That means we are no longer hitting the lower bound of the reservoir at zero. We are getting the full allotment of our, of our irrigation demand all the way to October. Okay, but we had a couple of more constraints we needed to put in there, going back to Excel. We never want to let the reservoir drop below this value, so I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. Going back to Gold Sim, going back to edit mode, and going into the reservoir and clicking, going out of my lower bound and changing that from zero to a non-zero value. Um, now, of course, uh, this will not allow for uh, evaporation. Um, even if we had any kind of uncontrolled uh, outflows such as seepage or evaporation, this uh, reservoir would never allow us to drop below this value. So um, for accounting purposes, this might be okay, but for a realistic model, we may want to, to uh, build it a little bit differently, and I will do that in, an, in a following video um, where I will show you how to do evaporation losses from a reservoir. But for now, we're just going to keep this simple and say we will not allow the reservoir to drop below that value. I also want to add the upper bound, and that's where I'm going to put the spillway um, uh, uh, volume there. So I'm going back to the spreadsheet, and I'm going to click on the, uh, the volume that's associated with the uh, elevation of the spillway, and copy that to the clipboard, and then going back into Gold Sim. And now I have to check the box because it's unchecked by default. That means that it didn't have any upper bounds, but I want to add one now and paste that value in. All right, so now we have a lower bound, an upper bound, and a starting value. Note the starting quantity must be in between the lower and the upper. Well, it should be between the up, lower and the upper. It wouldn't make sense to be outside of that range. So I'll click OK and run the model and look at the time, time, time history. And you can see that the volume rises up to a point where it flattens out. That's because it hit the upper bound. That means there was an overflow that occurred. The water volume draws down until we hit the lower bound. You can see just for a little while it flattens out and also our deliveries are curtailed at that point. So there are a couple of things going on here. First of all, our water deliveries do not match the demand at this point right here and also we have an overflow that's not, be, not being accounted for at this time. I don't know if you noticed, but when I ran the model, there was a little warning message. Um, so I'm going to show you that message by running it again. So I'll just hit run again. It says, are you sure you want to run again? I'll say yes. When it finishes, that says there was one warning, no fatal errors. Do you want to display the run log? And I'll click yes. This will show me now that we have a warning message down here at the bottom. Up here it just shows you all the information about the simulation. But down here is where the warnings are. It says um, at this point in time the reservoir is overflowing but there is nothing linked to the overflow output. This is just a message to tell you that hey that might not be accounted for. You have overflow that just disappears into the air. You should probably account for that um, and have it go somewhere in your model. So I'm going to close this message, go back to edit mode, and all I need to do is just reference the, out, the overflow from this, from this uh, element here. So I'm just going to use another expression element, add that here and call it overflow. This is a flow over the spillway. And it's actually the, uh, um, it's, it's the flow over the spillway as an instantaneous rate. Um, because we set an upper bound, Goldson will never allow the reservoir volume to rise above that volume at all. And it will always calculate exactly the amount of flow that, um, that would be in excess above that, uh, above that value at any point in time. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is put in the units here of liters per second and then reference the reservoir dot overflow like that. And now I'm going to link this overflow to the time history. And you can see it also has units of liters per second. Click close and run and show the chart and you can see that the cyan color here shows the 
the overflow that occurs during the time that we have hit the upper bound. We can also look at a table view of the data and it shows the overflow occurring starting here and ending here. One quick note with GoldSim, um, even though we've specified that we want one day time steps, it's possible in GoldSim to insert unscheduled time events and we do have a couple of unscheduled events that have occurred in this model. The first one being when we hit the uh, upper bound, the next one being when we hit the lower bound. And we can view those inserted time steps by selecting an advanced property. And we need to do that. We can do that by going back to edit mode, going to our simulation settings, click on advanced, and you see here that Goldsim is allowing unscheduled updates to occur. We want to, for the time being, include these unscheduled updates in scalar time histories, which is the plot that we were just looking at. So we'll go ahead and click OK now. When I click on the properties of this chart, what you'll see is a little something a little bit different here. When each of these outputs, it says high res, meaning high resolution results are being displayed for this chart. I'm going to run the model and look at this chart. And you won't see a lot of difference right now. But what you will see is a difference in the table view. I'll go to the table view and I'll scroll down to the point where we hit the upper bound. The overflow begins and you see that there is a time point that is not exactly on the day change. It's a, it's a time at exactly the point at which we started to overflow. So if you look at the reservoir volume, we hit 13399. That is exactly the point of the uh, upper bound. And that is when our overflow begins. Once again, we can go down to where the reservoir volume approaches the lower bound and hits it at 11336. And that happened at exactly this time during the day. We insert a time point um, that tells us that the irrigation delivery must be something less than the, than the demand. You can see that's occurring here. It just so happens that the demand can only be what the inflow is once we hit that lower bound. So these two would be the same these two values at each point. We're just outflowing whatever's in it coming in. If you do not want to see, if you do not want to have these inserted steps and you would prefer to only show the average inflow or the average overflow over the time step, then you can disable the unscheduled events. We can do that by going back to edit mode, going into the, oops, going into the simulation settings advanced and uncheck this allow updates rerun the model and now what we will see is if i scroll down to where the overflow begins that this is just going to be an average overflow during that day even though the overflow didn't start until the middle of the uh, a, uh may 8th it shows an average overflow over that 24-hour period same thing with the uh the discharge when we hit the lower bound we hit the lower bound here. This is going to be an average over the day. Um, it's somewhere between 250 and 19 for that day. Okay, so with just a few elements here, we've built a pretty uh, interesting model that shows us how the reservoir is changing over time. And we are operating the reservoir between the these uh, two constraints, the, uh, the spillway uh, volume amount and this minimum allowed value down here. So that uh, concludes this video. Um, in the next one, I will show you how to um, add a uh, elevation area and an er elevation volume curve to reference uh, elevations and also output um, the water surface area that corresponds with a given volume in the reservoir.